Brianna Cook. My name is Lucas Wolper. And my name is Joseph Cotta. And we'll be testing the gene delivery vehicles used or using lipid nanoparticles. Our genes serve as the blueprints which tell the body what to do, but sometimes these genes come with defects. These defects can cause diseases anywhere from cancer to Parkinson's or any other neurodegenerative diseases. So with these defects in our genes, we, the traditional methods of medicine cannot treat these diseases directly. So it would be ideal to have a direct delivery system that would attack that particular gene defect. So in nature, viruses have perfected this delivery system by attaching themselves to cells and manipulating their genes directly. So if we're taking from nature and applying it to synthetics because these viruses are in unstable and we're, we can't directly coordinate where, that, where they deliver their genes. So we're gonna use a synthetic lipid nanoparticle to deliver the gene fix itself to the cell. So what we do is we take the gene and we apply it to a circular DNA chain called a plasmid. And then we encase that plasmid into a, a series of lipid nanoparticles, which then we can directly in, um, introduce to the cell itself, creating a, an absorption. Now, as for the three different gene delivery vehicles we will be using, we have mixed each one with a positively charged lipid. This is important because cells and DNA are mostly negatively charged, and we have designated a charge ratio to each one of our lipid nanoparticles. The charge ratio takes into consideration the total lipid charge over the total plasmid DNA charge. This way we can get an idea of how a lipid nanoparticle will interact with the surface of the cell. So for instance, if we have a charge ratio that is very low, the lipid nanoparticle will likely not be taken up by the cell, and if a charge ratio is too high, it will be taken up by the cell, but our gene of interest will not be expressed. So we are looking for a Goldilocks range where we will be able to have our lipid nanoparticle to be taken up by the cell and also have our gene of interest expressed. Our first gene delivery vehicle consists of neutral lipids, and this is our control. This is because when dealing directly with cells, this gene delivery vehicle is very efficient. However, when we're considering more complex biological systems, consider the human body, this type of nanoparticle is quickly taken out by the immune system and the kidney and liver. So to increase the lifetime of lipid nanoparticles in medicinal applications for humans, we have coated it with polyethylene glycol, or PEG. PEG is important because not only does it increase the, the duration of the lipid nanoparticle in the bloodstream, but unfortunately it also makes it so that it is more lubricated and that it is less likely to adhere to cells. So to address this, we have added a peptide. And a peptide is a chain of amino acids. In this case, RGD consists of three amino acids and it has been coined molecular glue because it is involved with cell adhesion. We are hoping that our third gene delivery vehicle, the neutral lipid with PEG and RGD, will have the efficiency of the neutral lipids alone while still having the longer lifetime provided by polyethylene PEG. Yeah. So in order to measure how effective these three different types of delivery vehicles are at delivering a given gene to our cells, we use what is called luciferase assay. Now, luciferase is a gene found in fireflies that when expressed pr produce a protein called luciferase that emits a fluorescent light. So in our case, we have taken this luciferase gene and inserted it into our delivery vehicles, which we then have transferred the luciferase gene into our cells. Now, after it's into our cells, pardon me, uh, it produces the fluorescent light. And here you can see examples of cells that have been introduced with the luciferase gene and are expressing the protein. And also there's very light efficiency from these cells, which tells you how much protein is in that given cell. 
So as you see in the picture on the left, this is our control, the lipid, which expresses the ideal, rate, um, the ideal expression of our protein from the cell. So we, we relate it to our second picture, which is the lipid coated in the peg, which obviously shows that there was barely any absorption into the cell by the particle itself. Where the lipid coated in peg that had the RGD attached accessed itself into the cell efficiently and expressed similar, uh, similar fluorescence to the control itself. Along with our qualitative results, we also have quantitative data from the luciferase assay measurements. So here for our vertical axes, we have how effective the three different type of delivery vehicles were at delivering that luciferase gene to the cells. And for our units, we use RLU, which stands for radiant light units, which measures how intense or bright these fluorescent lights that were being emitted in, this, in the given cells. For our, y, our, X, sorry, pardon, our horizontal axes, we have our charge ratio and the three different types that we used in this experiment. In outlined in our blue column, we have our lipid, which acted as our control. And you can see that it had a very high efficiency rate. Unfortunately, though, when the lipid, as ex explained earlier, is directly put into the body, the lifespan of the lipid is dramatically decreased, therefore deemed inefficient. So then we have the red, or pardon me. So when the lipid is isolated in cells, though, we can use that as a comparison for our two other types of delivery vehicles. And for our red column, we have our lipid coated in the hay. And as expected, we have a significant decrease in efficiency. In the green column, we have our lipid coated with the peg and the RGD. And as our hypothesis is thought, we have a significant increase in efficiency that resembles that of our original lipid control. As we hoped, our lipid peg RGD nanoparticle was able to restore the efficiency of the neutral lipid by itself when using a charge ratio of 20. It should also be noted that gene expression for an increase regardless of charge ratio uh, when we use the lipid RGD, lipid peg RGD nanoparticle. This is a gene delivery is important because uh, it can make medicine both personalized and specific. It's personalized in that we are able to deliver a nanoparticle into a patient and have their own cells create the proteins to treat the symptoms of a particular disease. It is specific in that it can target certain types of cells. So for instance, in the treatment of cancer, we might attach a different peptide instead of RGD that would target cancer cells alone. This can be used as an alternative for chemotherapy. We would like to thank the Jack Kent Cook Foundation for helping us and funding this, this organization. And we would also like to thank our advisors and our, our directors and the RAs and Christofferson and everybody who basically helped us do this throughout this week. And we'd like to give a special thanks to our advisor, Dr. Savinia, and our uh, mentor, Emily Wonder, who without her, we could not have any, we wouldn't have any clue what we were doing in the lab. <laughs> I mean, None of us are, bi are biology majors, and it was a really, really intense experience. <laughs>